Hello students, uh, this video is for uh, chapter 15 class 8 that is your light and this is to be done in your physics notebook. So uh, let's start this chapter. Uh, so and, uh, in 7th standard we have seen this chapter that is basically your light and its associated phenomena and this chapter uh, is sort of a recall you can say or a sort of recall, uh, recap for the topic and the contents and you can see the concepts that we have studied. So the first, uh, uh, let's start this chapter and the first definition that we have, the first topic basically is your ref reflection. So reflection as we have all have studied in the previous two classes, uh, it's nothing but the uh, bouncing back of light uh, when it strikes a particular surface. And uh, when uh, the reflection is occurring, there are certain terms that we have are associated with it that we have to be aware of. The one is incident ray, the light which strikes, uh, which goes and strikes a surface. Then uh, the the one that uh, gets reflected is called as reflected. And any ray uh, at the point of incidence where the incident ray and the reflected ray basically meet is called as a point of incidence. Then we have a normal. Basically, it's a line which is non perpendicular uh, at the point of incidence, and this is uh, and it is uh, normal, or you can say uh, perpendicular to the. Uh, normal sur surface where exactly the reflection is occurring now uh, there are two angles basically associated with the uh, topic of reflection those are your angle of incidence and your angle of reflection so as we can see as we can see in this diagram basically the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called as angle of incidence and the one between the normal uh, and the reflected ray is called as angle of reflection and there are certain laws which are basically associated with the reflection and those two laws state that uh, that angle of incidence is uh, always equal to angle of reflection that whatever might be the type of surface or whatever type of reflection we are occurring then the second one basically states that uh, we all have seen um, and discussed in the classes there are there can be multiple number of planes so may might be horizontal vertical or transversal or in any dimension you can think of uh, so uh, basically the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal they all lie in the same plane now uh, basically depending upon the surface uh, uh, on which the reflection is occurring they can be classified into two categories so either a reflection can be of a regular type or you can say of irregular type uh, the basic difference that you can visualize from by looking at the diagram is that uh, incident rays uh, when they are falling on a surface there is basically a beam they will come from a direction and after reflection they all go in a uniformly in a same direction whereas in case of irregular reflection the, they are coming from a same direction but uh, uh, the direction of reflected rays is not uniform they are scattered or uh, they'll not fall, follow a single direction concept so the reason for this is the surface basically is like if the surface is too smooth or regular uh, smooth or you can say highly polished then we have regular reflection and uh, if the surface is high rough you can say then we have irregular reflection now uh, there are certain uh, properties which are associated for the image that is being formed in a brain mirror and those properties we have again uh, seen in the previous classes and we'll just try to recall them the first is upright basically uh, the image is that is formed is always a uh, virtually upright that the, that is like the image will be first of all it is will be virtual and uh, if you consider a person standing yourself like if you are yourself standing in front of a mirror your head um, that is the image of uh, the head of your image will also be uh, at the top and the legs will be at the bottom you can simply say that now second is laterally inversion what happens that is like uh, we have the concept of ambulance like how it is written on the uh, top of uh, of a particular van hospital vans and uh, to get a proper image uh, in our rear view mirror when we are driving and the, if the ambulance is following us so how it will be looking in your uh, mirror so the concept basically here states that the object uh, object right or you can say the right of object will, will become the left of the image and the left of the object will become right of the image this is called as laterally inversions means the object is inverted but instead of vertically you can say uh, they are horizontally inverted then we have the size size remains same uh, basically the size of object and image in case of plane we will, uh, we will always be equal to each other and the, again uh, the concept of size uh, distance is there basically the distance that we have between the object and the mirror that is a real distance means that actually you can see is actually equal to the hypothetical distance that we can consider between the image and the mirror now uh, there comes uh, the topic of multiple reflections again we have seen in the last year and this uh, states that uh, like when the two mirrors are inclined at a particular angle the number of images formed will be depending upon at what angle the mirrors are inclined 
so basically we have a formula for that uh, where that states n is equal to 360 upon theta minus 1 n is nothing but the number of images and uh, theta is the angle at which the two mirrors are inclined to each other and uh, for example you can simply say if uh, two mirrors are inclined at an angle of 90 degree so it will be something like 360 by 90 minus 1 that will be 4 minus 1 and you can say three images are will be formed uh, another example of uh, multiple reflection you can see the classical one that i always recommend uh, very easy to understand the people uh, when we are going through multiple reflection is your periscope so uh, highly used in you can say uh, submarines or in tankers so the basic concept here states that if you are uh, at a lower height then uh, you can check out a substance from a higher height like how it will work is like in a submarine we have a uh, uh, we'll have two mirrors and there the reflection will occur two times firstly on the upper mirror uh, and then the second mirror is adjusted in such a way that light after getting reflected from the first mirror will be deviated towards the second mirror and then it will be penetrating your eyes and uh, finally you'll be able to see an image and same thing is being used in a tanker so like when a person being inside a tanker can see what actually is happening outside the surroundings now this all was all about your reflection and secondly we have the second topic associated with the light is your refraction so refraction again uh, something we have seen previously uh, it's nothing but you can say uh, when the light goes from one medium to another medium uh, in reflection the light was uh, basically residing in a single medium but in refraction what occurs so when the light changes its medium uh, so there is a sort of deviation in its path it deviates from its path and the reason for that deviation is the change in the speed of light uh, basically the light travels with different uh, speed in different media and uh, cause of that we have this deviation and this deviation is basically called as uh, refraction so uh, there are certain rules uh, like we had the laws of reflection there are again certain rules which are associated with the uh, refraction and that states that uh, whenever the light is going from a uh, relatively rarer medium to a denser medium it will bend towards the normal and whenever it is going from a denser medium to a rarer medium it will be uh, like uh, uh, going away from the normal now this word denser and rarer i am using is basically term uh, defined on the basis of uh, optical density and optical density you can say uh, is uh, something we, which we, on the basis of which we can say uh, depending on the speed of light in different medias this property is defined so if a speed uh, of light is high in a medium we can say that optical medium is optically rarer and if the speed of light is uh, very slower or in a particular media we can say it is optically denser now uh, now we have a refraction through a prism prism as you know basically it looks like a if you are checking on 3d uh, it looks like a palogram but if you are saying it's a in 2d it will look like a triangle completely made up of glass and again we have uh, the 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 reason we study about the prism is that basically the deviation or the how the light was supposed to go and how it actually goes when it passes through a prism and how much deviation is there can be easily calculated so in this diagram you can see incident ray and the two normals are being drawn so first when it goes into the uh, first surface that is your ab uh, it will bend towards the normal cause it is basically traveling from a rarer medium to a denser medium then after that again when it will try to come outside the glass that is again going from a denser medium to a rare medium it will be bending away from the normal and uh, then we can draw uh, an angle uh, between the two lines uh, one is a hypothetical line that we can say in which the light was supposed to travel if there was no prism and the one in which it goes and by those joining those two lines we can get an angle that angle is called as angle of deviation and uh, that basically helps out how much the light got splitted now another uh, phenomena that is associated with the light is basically your dispersion and that states that uh, whenever light passes through a particular media uh, prism basically uh, there are chances that it might get split into its seven constituent colors and we say that so uh, because we know that the white light is nothing but a mixture of uh, seven different colors so right uh, that the band is called as spectra and something like what you have to be careful uh, violet comes at the lowermost uh, it means you can say at the bottom and the red comes at the top so you can see the red color shows the least deviation and violet color shows the higher deviation so in white light also you can see that the different constituent colors are there and those also also have a different uh, speed and because of that speed variation there is deviation more uh, more deviation in violet color than as compared to your uh, red color and the reason for having le less deviation in the red color is that uh, we can say that uh, in most of the vehicles when we say that they are applying brakes right uh, they have red color okay and apart from that if you would have seen some very high tall rise buildings on the top of those we have a uh, something like a red color blinking light uh, which visually uh, uh, gives the uh, information to the planes that uh, you are flying at a very low height 
uh, and informing about a geographical area. Now, this is something that we can do artificially when we are passing the light to through a prism. The classical example of that is like uh, the rainbow that you have seen. So, uh, for rainbow, we have to understand that both are necessary. And by both, I mean so there, it should be a cloudy weather. And along with that, uh, means the cloud should be there. And uh, along with that, there should be, uh, you can say, uh, sunshine. Right. So basically the droplets in the clouds, those act as a prism and uh, cause of the refraction occurred uh, in the light through the droplets when it passes through them. We have the concept that is called as uh, the rainbow. Next topic, again, uh, something uh, new that we have this year is your finally your human eye. Uh, basically, again, you know that it's a highly sensitive organ, one of the sensory organs that we have. And in those sensory organs also, something which is extremely delicate or you can say sensitive is your eye, right? One of the five senses that we have. So uh, basically, uh, we have been given the diagram of eyeball, completely how it looks. And they have given a cross section after cutting it into two halves. So starting from the first, if we check out from the left, uh, we have this thing that is called as cornea. It is nothing but a transparent membrane. Uh, this is the first thing that light will come in contact when it is entering your eye. Then after that, uh, you all would have seen the people you'd be talking about, right? Someone is having green color eyes, brown or red color or black color eyes. That is cause of iris. So iris is nothing but a muscular organ. And at the center one, the centermost portion of that, uh, you have a black color hole that is basically your pupil. So pupil are the something that uh, regulates the amount of light and uh, this regulation part is basically controlled by iris so iris uh, is being a muscular organ it either contracts or relax thereby increasing or decreasing the size of pupil and resulting in uh, the light intensity or you can see the light penetrating to be more or less right and the pupil is usually black because we know that black is the best absorber so it allows all the light going through your eyes to penetrate inside it then by default by the gift of god you can say we have a lens so that is your convex lens in our eye uh, and that is called as eye lens which are at, again attached to the eyeball with the help of uh, uh, some muscles those are muscles are called as ciliary muscles so basically uh, we have been given the gift uh, you can say that we can change the focal length uh, like our focus right we might be able to see uh, something object some object which are very very far away you would have seen some stars or uh, moons uh, which are blinking at a very 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 far away distance or you might be uh, next moment you might be checking your phone or you might be reading a book right so you can see how much uh, we are changing the focal length uh, and this change in the focal length of eye is called as power of accommodation right so this is done by the uh, you can say ciliary muscles uh, means the change of the focal length of the islands right uh, then finally the the rays of light which are entering through the eyes which pass through the cornea through pupil lens so they will uh, converge uh, at retina and retina act as a screen so basically it contains two type of cells those cells are called as rod cells or you can say corn cells rod cells are something which enables us to see in very uh, low light because they are sensitive to the low light intensity and the cones are the one that are sensitive to high light uh, and that's why they are uh, basically uh, they are the one which helps in distinguishing between the different colors right and there's a particular uh, portion on the retina which is doesn't have uh, any sort of cell and that portion is called as blind spot uh, because they're actually the optic nerve one of the nerve uh, associated with the phenomena of uh, seeing different objects is also there which comes from the brain and joins at the uh, eyeball so at that spot we don't have anything and that spot is basically called as blind spot uh, so moving on uh, we have seen the accommodation that is the changing in the focal length that done by the uh, the contraction or you can say relaxation of uh, ciliary muscles uh, muscles and ultimately changing the shape of uh, the aperture uh, of uh, eye lens and basically the aperture will remain same but you can see thickness of the eye lens might vary and thereby increasing or decreasing the converging power of uh, eye lens uh, then we have a, a small definition that is called as least distance of distinct vision. So normally uh, any eye, generally eye, if you are considering the distance 25 centimeters is taken as a reference because that is the smallest distance that you can uh, focus without uh, straining your eyes. Means you can say without putting extra effort or stress on your eyes. That is the minimum distance that can be seen, right? So that is taken as the least distance of distinct vision. Then there are certain defects of eye. Uh, those defects are basically first one that we will encounter is myopia or you can say short sightedness need not be confused again with the name uh, short sightedness basically means the uh, you'll be able to see nearby objects but uh, you might have uh, issues uh, in uh, looking at the objects which are very far away. Uh, for example when you are in the class the people uh, who are having issues with uh, checking out the eye. Uh, at the blackboard they are suffering from myopia so what happens in myopia technically is like uh, 
you can say that muscles uh, muscles are uh, not able to relax properly so the converging power increases the the final convergence of image that was supposed to be uh, converged actually at retina they will be image will be formed before the retina and uh, right cause of this uh, the best remedy for that is to use a concave lens and that is why uh, even myself or uh, you would have seen like the people most of your class who are having issue in checking out the blackboard uh, from by sitting in the last bench they are suffering from myopia it's basically a muscular issue right the uh, muscles ciliary muscles lose their power power to you can say relax actually then exactly opposite to that is hypermetropia where you would have seen in the elderly people in your house right they might be uh, finding it difficult to check out or read certain books and uh, right what happens here is like uh, the eye muscles are not able to relax uh, you can say eye muscles are not able to uh, relax properly so here actually the uh, sorry you can say contract properly and that is why the image which are supposed to form on the retina they are forming behind the retina and for uh, correction we use a convex lens right and then astigmatism is there one more defect that is basically associated or you can say specific type of hypermetropia which occurs in a very old age when the muscles lose their power to uh, you can say contract or relax they find difficult in both the things uh, like either to for a nearby object or you can say a far away object then cataract uh, then the, the word that we have one more disease that is the motia bean uh, the general term that is being is used in our society uh, is you can say in this your islands becomes cloudy and if it is not being treated properly uh, it may result in permanent uh, you can say blindness now there are certain technologies which are being used by visually impaired people uh, the classic one is the one that we have is braille lippy so it was braille system uh, this was given by sir louis braille uh, he himself was uh, visually impaired you can say and he developed a system uh, where uh, there are certain engravings on a particular piece of paper and by touching those uh, they can uh, read out exactly like how, like how normal people can check out uh, or distinguish between the alphabets numbers punctuations pronunciation and all uh, those people are able to do it with the help of by just uh, touching those engravings or you can say there are some sort of uh, uh, dots like structure and those will help them to read out the uh, proper sentences and all then there are certain cares like being a sensory organ that to a delicate one there are certain steps that need to be uh, to be followed basically to take a proper care like uh, you sh should not be studying or uh, you uh, like focusing on something and uh, dim or less light uh, you should be cleaning your eyes at, at regular intervals right uh, eye checkup should be done at a frequent intervals again there should be a minimum distance between your eye or eye and tv or you can say phone and all and uh, something if might get in, uh, enters your eye you should not rub them just uh, gently try to take it out uh, or you can simply wash them right and try to eat more of uh, green leafy vegetables containing iron and vitamin a so that's it from this chapter guys thank you